What's up guys? I got another Lion Tour video for you. In this Lion Tour video, we'll be going up against MNG. I'll be going path six this war. This first node is unblockable L1, Limber, and Aggression Fury. I actually just uh I just unlocked Scouter Lens, so I can see that this is a rank four cosmic. And I do boost up, and it turns out being a Captain Marvel, actually. This was uh I don't know, I feel like this was pretty bad placement. This Aggression Fury node can be pretty tricky with the unblockable L1 and and the Limber that's on it. But Captain Marvel is very easy uh, to fight and to beat. So her L1s are really, really easy to evade. I was wondering, like, should I just continuously evade her L1s uh, or should I power drain her? I decided up uh, to, to power drain her just to drop my L2s and get a decent amount of damage. Maybe finish the fight faster. And uh, one more parry, and she does go down. So this next node is Bane, Stun Immunity, and Enhanced Abilities. And once again, uh, Scouter Lens is showing that it's a rank 3 champion and a Cosmic. So I wasn't too worried when I saw it was a rank 3. It turns out being a Venom Pool. I brought uh, my OGV into this fight just in case it turned out being a Hyperion. And I do retaliate Venom's pool, uh, Venom pool's heavy mid-heavy, just to try and just keep space, make sure I don't get backed up against the wall too much. And he does get his regen to proc. I drop my L1, uh, I drop my L2, get the uh, get the heal block, and then Bane does kill him. So this next node is Limber, Buffet, and Recovery, node 24. And it's a 565 skill, so obviously it's going to be a blade. I threw a invulnerability boost on, not mainly for this for this uh, fight, but for the next one. Anyway, it is a 565 blade, and I do have a blade on my attack team, so I do start off with the three poise charges in the beginning of the fight. Um, I do. I am just trying to build a couple poise charges before uh, before getting back into the wall, or trying not to get back into the wall, which is what I'm doing now. I got nine poise charges. He does let off a heavy, and unfortunately, I guess I just wasn't fast enough. And that free hit heavy just uh, just totally turned off my invulnerability boost. Good thing I threw it on. So uh, I am at ten, I am at ten poise charges, and I am laying into him now. You gotta be careful of when I parry him. His stun timer. Uh, this note does have limber on it, so he throws a heavy, and I do retaliate him mid heavy. That strategy is uh, it works really well against blade. You just gotta get the timing down perfect. So. Uh, the recovery node does does uh does just does just trigger off my dexterity. I once again retaliate his heavy, and then I retaliate his L1. I was close enough um, to him to retaliate his L1, so I did do that. Uh, once again, I retaliate his heavy, like mid heavy, and I do drop my L2, and it was enough to get him down. So yeah, pretty clean fight versus that 565 blade uh, with my spark on buffet. So this next node is All or Nothing, Plague Mine, and Strike Back. And it turns out being a rank 5 Medusa. This is the main reason I threw that invulnerability boost on for this All or Nothing Medusa. So uh, my game plan with this fight is to do the most amount of damage with the least amount of hits. So uh, I do want to just be dropping my, my heavies. Uh, Sparks heavies do a ton of damage, so that's what I'm going to do. Just solely drop my heavies against this Medusa. And uh, she does have her living strands up. She does have her three furies up. So I'm making sure I'm not attacking her more than once. And I am trying to build a couple, uh, a decent amount of poise charges. Unfortunately, right here, I tried to build a poise charge and I was just too early and she did clip me. So I can only tank one L3 now because uh, the invulnerability boost is three hits. And two of those hits she just caught, she just got on me. Uh, right there, I tried to, uh, once again, uh, hit her with my heavy, but she just, she just, uh, she dexed out of it. Right here, I dropped my heavy, and literally my power gain just came back at the perfect... My power drain from my heavy just came back at the perfect time. The uh, the 30 seconds was up. So this Medusa is going down pretty quick. This heavy strategy is working pretty well. Uh, good thing this node doesn't have stun immunity on it or uh, or limber. A Medu if you're fighting a Medusa and you can stun her, it's, it's not a real Medusa, I feel like. 
But uh, yeah, that last that last uh, heavy does crit for like 22k in assassin's range. I was uh, I was pretty stoked about that. So this next node is power gain, uh, power shield, and unblockable L2. Power shield is uh, only your special attacks do damage. Your regular attacks do uh, do zero damage. And I think your special attacks do uh, maybe double or triple the amount of damage. Anyway, it's a six-star tech champion, and I am thinking it's a, uh, a sentinel. Sentinel is a decent placement for this node, and it does turn out being a six-star sentinel. So I want to uh, build up poise charges while getting to my L2 and also not getting back into the wall against this guy. I don't really care too much about building up his, uh, his analysis charges. I'm fine with building those up. So I do get a nice parry off and a five hit combo, and the taunt is on him. He is uh, he's throwing his L1s. I'm uh, I'm not retaliating his L1s just in case uh, my auto evade does trigger and it messes up the timing of my retaliation in. So I'm making sure I'm not retaliating uh, Sentinel's L1s. So this node does have unblockable L2, and it is a power gain node. So I'm just trying to keep him uh, at his at uh, below an L2 at his L1. So yeah, I do uh, I do get a decent amount of hits on him. Um, I'm six, 17 hits in, and now that I am close to an L2, I want to uh, I want to power drain him before I let off my L2, and then I let it off. Unfortunately, he threw a heavy and was unstoppable, and also unfortunately none of my hits crit. But luckily, Spark has the shock damage, and Sentinel is a robot, and Spark's shock damage does uh, double the amount of damage against robots. So those three shock damages, were, uh, those three shock charges, were doing a ton of damage to Sentinel. But unfortunately, they didn't take him down. So I just want to be extra cautious um, and build to another L2. I didn't really want to drop my L1 just in case it wasn't enough. So I just want to be extra cautious and uh, build up to one more L2. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm just solely uh, baiting out his L1s continuously. I am getting backed up against the wall a little bit. And I bait out this L1 and do retaliate in. I just I felt comfortable retaliating in, in, in there. Because I was against the wall a little bit. And I uh, bait out one more heavy. Drop one more L, uh, L2. And one, one hit crits for like 33k. Doing a decent amount of damage. So this next node is Poison, Brute Force, and Unblockable L2. And my scouter lens is showing that it's a 565, and it's a mutant. I was expecting, uh, I was expecting Iceman on this node, so I do top off my OGV since this is also a poison node. I'm going to use OGV here, and I was expecting Iceman, so I topped off OGV and brought him into this fight. And I do get a uh, a parry in the beginning of the fight, shut off his ice armor, uh, evade that heavy pretty well, and do uh, attack into him. So now that his ice armor is off, I'm just going to take advantage of parrying him. And I do drop that L that L2 and power drain him. Now I'm just waiting for a next in. And I parried him right before his ice armor came up. And unfortunately, right there, he dropped his L1. And I, I like, froze. Uh, it was pretty nuts. He did drop his L1. He does have the frostbite charges on me now. I am ticking down. Uh, the fr frostbite does expire. And I'm at a, and it, tick, and it, it takes off 11k health. I'm at like 16% left or 19% left. This was a pretty crazy fight. I'm really comfortable evading Iceman's L1s, but I don't know, for some reason right there, I just froze. It's like I was ready for it, but I guess I really wasn't ready for it, unfortunately. So the brute force, this node does have brute force on and the brute force node, every six seconds you don't apply a hit to the defender, they do, uh, a degen does apply onto you. So this timer does tick down, brute force does get on me. Luckily I got a parry on. Uh, get Bruce, Brute Force off of me and kill Iceman at the same time. So yeah, very sketchy fight. Uh, that was really scrub performance on me getting clipped by that L1. But good thing I didn't die. So this next node is the, the center mini boss. And this node has Limber, Plague Mine, and Kinetic Reactor on it. It's also a Captain America Infinity War. Uh, I feel like this is a diversity placement. Uh, Captain America isn't really a hard defender whatsoever. I do top off Spark just in case. Don't want to give up any attack bonus. So uh, in the beginning of this fight, I do want to build up some poise charges. And uh, Captain America is, he's like co cooperating almost. He's not fully backing me against the wall. He's dashing back every poise charge. So I, I got to 10. I do bait out that heavy. Uh, do a decent, decent job baiting out that L1 as well. 
Uh, his L1 is very easy to evade and retaliate. So yeah, Captain America is not really that hard of a defender. I do get a decent amount of parries off. This node does have limber on, so I gotta be careful about that. I uh, get another five foot combo, drop my L1 before the plague mine hits, <clears throat> and I do get him down. So uh, that was actually the last fight in this alliance war for me. Uh, one a guy in my battle group who has a 565 Corvus took on the 565 uh, uh, Killmonger on No. 29. Big shout out to uh, the Integral. Uh, I hope you guys like this footage. did win this war uh really really stoked about that uh big shout out to mng even bigger shout out to the other 29 alliance mates in my alliance for kicking major ass congratulations to all the mvps i hope you guys like this alliance war video till the next one peace